Hello, my name is Jouni Vilkka and this is my channel TFF Teacher from Finland. This video is part of my series Introduction to Ethics and within it the part about normative ethics. Over the past two videos I have been explaining contractarianism and the ethical views concerning rights connected to it. This time I am presenting some examples while also going a bit beyond this subject into other ethical matters like ethics of belief. But first, as always, I would like to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the thumbs up button. The freedom of religion is a fundamental right, a human right. It includes both a negative and a positive freedom, or liberty, and the negative one includes two constituent parts as well. A negative freedom, as I have explained in the previous video, means freedom from restrictions. So, freedom of religion, in this sense, means that you are not prevented from believing and practicing your religion. At least, assuming that you are not breaking other laws while doing so. For example, if you choose to believe in a god you call Baal, for spurious reasons, and insist that Baal requires human sacrifices, you can be legally prevented from carrying out the sacrifice of another person, because that would be murder. But you are free to believe that it is your God's will. No one can prevent you from believing that. You are free to build a shrine to Baal on your own property, and you may even be defended against attempts by others to prevent your religious rituals, as long as they are not themselves criminal in nature. The second aspect of this negative freedom of religion means that participation in religious rituals is not compulsory. And you cannot legally be forced to participate in any kind of practice of religion. You are not only free to practice religion, you are also free from religion. This is hugely important and even now poorly understood in Finland. For example, at a school in Finland, a class might go to church, or there could be some religious activity at school. Even a member of the church does not have to participate in rituals or other practice of religion, and should be offered alternative things to do. That means all the students should be given a choice between different but equal options one of which is participating in the religious activity. The positive freedom of religion means the right to practice your religion, but may go further to include the right to gain support in practicing that religion. This applies to minority groups that may find it difficult to find a way to practice their religion without some sort of public support. Such support can mean that the group is provided access to a place where they can practice their religious rituals. In common cases in Finland, it even includes religious education at school. That is, according to law, uh, Finnish students under 18 years of age are given education about their own religion, which I find a bit silly. How could someone else educate you about your own religion? But of course, what is meant is education about the beliefs, traditions and practices of that religious group in general. It should only be education about the religion, and is not supposed to be indoctrination into the religion. Uh, whether the student believes the religious tenets or not, should always be up to them personally because they are meant to have religious freedom, after all. The freedom of speech is similarly uh, a lack of restriction to speak, or in other ways express one's beliefs, opinions, attitudes and anything else one wishes to express. It is not a freedom from the consequences of such speech. One can be found guilty of defamation or incitement to violence, for example. Sometimes a person accused of such crimes claims that this is censorship, 
but it is not. They were allowed to make their speech or publish their literary work or whatever it is they did. Of course, the claim that the speech was defamatory or in other ways illegal, unethical or just inappropriate has to be justified itself. You cannot simply state that you found it insulting or were offended by it. If we were to accept that alone, we would be forced to yield discursive power to every person claiming to be offended. Which is what a lot of people are doing these days, unfortunately. But just because someone is offended by some speech, it does not necessarily mean the speech itself was in any way wrong. Communication is a two-way street. You not only send forth your message, but you also have to interpret the messages of others. You should apply the principle of benevolent interpretation in this, assuming the other communicator to be intellectually, ethically and in every way as good as possible, given what you are interpreting. The opposite of this, a malevolent interpretation, would mean interpreting everything in the way that paints the communicator in the least favorable way possible. Interpreting other people intentionally in bad faith like that is clearly dishonest behavior. If you actually seek the truth, you have to try to find the best possible arguments for different claims and views, and you can only do that by interpreting everything in the best possible way. If even then, the only possible interpretation you can come up with seems hostile, you may be inclined to believe that it actually is. In that case, it may be a good idea to ask if that truly was the intention. If the other person intends harm, they may very well state it in no uncertain terms. Otherwise, they may help you to understand what was actually being communicated, in which case both of you are likely to improve your understanding of things. Some people may think that the freedom of speech has collided with the freedom of religion, when religious beliefs or any aspect of religion has been criticized. That is not the case. The freedom of religion does not protect the religion against any kind of speech. You may believe in Baal, but anyone hearing about it is also free to criticize this religion of yours, make fun of it and even ridicule all followers of that religion, meaning you. As long as they do not incite to violence against you, that is acceptable. It is even necessary, because it is very important that nonsensical, unjustified beliefs are ridiculed. And everyone is warned not to believe such ridiculous things. After all, it is most likely unethical to believe such things. One of my earliest videos is actually about the ethics of belief. See the link in the description. The legal right to believe anything you like does not give you the ethical right to do so. It is not ethically acceptable to form beliefs irrationally without justification. It is far better to believe in nothing than to believe in absolute nonsense. Beliefs should be proportional to the arguments and evidence supporting them. In other words, if there is epistemic justification for the belief, then there is ethical justification for it. But if not, then not. The most important point about the freedom of religion is joined with that of the freedom of speech in the demand that religions must be subjected to the same critical inquiry as everything else. Instead of being in conflict, these rights support each other. That's all I wanted to say this time. Until next time. If you wish to support my channel, please click thumbs up, subscribe and share my videos. Any comments on the videos would also be welcome.